Hi folks, welcome back. Today I come to you with a paper that talks about how to automatically detect bugs in system code by treating them as deviant behavior, behavior that's out of the norm from all the code around it. This work was done by Dawson Engler and his group at Stanford and was published back in 2001 in the Symposium of Operating System Principles. The first problem you face when you try to find bugs is a definitional one. You have to first define what correct behavior is. The thing is, what correct behavior is, is not formally specified or documented in the vast majority of cases. And if you then try and write down all the rules that your system must satisfy in order to be correct, there's always a chance that you might miss some. The key insight of this paper is that it relies on the source code itself to infer what those rules are. It does not depend on a human programmer then separately going and documenting all these correctness rules. Let's illustrate this idea with a simple concrete example. The goal is to infer from the code beliefs or facts that are implied by the code. Let's say that in our code base, we see that a call to lock is almost always eventually followed by a call to unlock. And then a very small number of times, say one out of a thousand times, we see that the call to unlock is not there. From this, we can reasonably infer that the small number of times that the call to unlock was missed is likely a bug. The main insight here is that we did not require anyone to specify for us this correctness rule that a lock must be followed by an unlock. It was inferred simply by noticing this pattern in the code. This work builds on this same research group's previous work on finding bugs in code using template checkers. I've made a video on that paper as well, and I will link to it in the description. You can still understand the high level gist of this paper without having read that other one, but I would strongly recommend reading the other one to get a complete picture of how this system works. All right, so the core idea of the system is to extract beliefs from code. Beliefs are simply facts implied by the code that is already written. And you have two types of beliefs. You have must beliefs and may beliefs. Must beliefs are things that must always hold true in the code. The most straightforward example of this is null pointer dereferences. If I write code that follows a pointer, that implies that I must believe that the pointer is not null. May beliefs are patterns that we see in the code base, but that may simply be a coincidence. The most common example of this is the pattern of a call to A must be followed by a call to B. And these two kinds of beliefs, must beliefs and may beliefs, are checked differently by the system. When you have a must belief, like a pointer D reference, you can straightforwardly look for contradictions. And any time you find something that doesn't follow that pattern, you know for sure that it is a bug. Now with may beliefs, the picture is a bit more complex because you don't know whether the belief is valid or simply a coincidence. So the system starts by assuming that may beliefs are must beliefs and then counts how many violations there are. And then they do a statistical analysis to see how probable these violations are. Going back to the lock unlock example, if you find that in 99.9% .9 of the cases you see they are paired and then you see a small number of cases where the pairing is not done correctly, then you can almost be certain that those small number of cases are bugs. So let's stress once again, the key advantage of this approach is that you don't have to specify these rules manually. These rules are inferred simply by looking for patterns in the existing code base. So as I mentioned, this builds on their previous work that checks properties of code that can be specified via templates. And so in this paper, 
they only look at beliefs that fit these kinds of templates. For example, A must be paired with B and so on, where A and B are templates that could be filled in with concrete instances of code. Let's look at a very simple concrete example of how beliefs are propagated through code and how contradictions to those beliefs indicate the presence of a bug. If you look at this little code snippet here, you'll see on line one, the comparison with null, which means that if you're inside the if statement, your belief set includes the belief that card is null. And now when you look at line three, where card is dereferenced, that would imply the belief that card is not null. And there you have a contradiction. So that implies the presence of a bug. So in general, the job of the checker is to look at these templates, find concrete slot instances to fill in these templates, and then propagate the implied beliefs through all code paths. And then looking at may beliefs, which includes things like A must be followed by B, they do a statistical analysis to see how often that pattern is followed versus not followed. And then you can use those counts to rank which errors are likely to be real bugs. As they say here, the higher the count of this belief being held, the more likely it is that the few violations of it are real bugs. All right, let's look at how the authors applied this system. They used it to look for errors in the OpenBSD and Linux kernels. They took the most current versions at the time that they were building this system. And so it is a real test because these are not bugs that were known at the time. And they found a number of bugs and many of them resulted in the kernels getting patched. And these are some of the examples of the kinds of templates they're looking for. There's of course the null pointer reference pattern, but then another very common pattern in kernels is to look for so-called dangerous user pointers. And these are pointers to data that is getting copied in from user space into kernel space. And this must always get passed through some sort of sanitizing mechanism before the kernel acts on it. And so we want to find all the places where we take in a dangerous user pointer, but act on it without having gone through the sanitization process. These are the results that they found when running on the Linux kernel they found about 200 bugs with a relatively low false positive rate. This was a bug where the null check came after the use and it was cut and pasted into 20 locations. The user pointer checker, which is the one that checks that a pointer to user space data is sanitized before getting used in kernel space, also found a fair number of bugs. They found about 35 bugs across OpenBSD and Linux. And the authors report that all of these bugs led to kernel patches to fix them, which is really good. There are some false positives, but that rate is fairly low. But these bugs are serious enough that you would be happy to find the true positives. Now, the true test of a bug finding system like this is for it to be able to find unforeseen errors. And the authors give a really interesting example of one that they found. And the trail to finding this happened with this false positive. And the false positive was that this pointer SHP was marked as an unchecked pointer that was then getting used. The cause of this error was that this method segalloc, which is what SHP is initialized to, returns a valid pointer on success, but when it fails, it does not return a null pointer, but instead it casts an integer error code into a void pointer. So something like this over here. Now, obviously, if you take this pointer and try to dereference it, it is not going to be a valid dereference. And interestingly, the only reason this got flagged because somewhere, one of the callers of this method forgot about this convention and checked the function's return against null. So that was an interesting example of where this analysis found 
a totally unpredictable type of error that they did not even know to look for. So to wrap up, this paper presents a system to automatically find bugs without having to actually specify correctness rules. It actually infers these correctness rules by looking for patterns in the source code. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.